Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Fahrenheit. I'm Ozzy Rila, and let's continue. Alright, uh, who should we be? Let's go with Carl. I've got this really bad habit for a cop. Once I start working on a case, I can't think about anything else. I'm exhausted, I haven't gotten a wink of sleep all night. Something's bothering me about this murder, but I just can't seem to put my finger on what it is. I think if I remember correctly, there's like a bonus card around here somewhere. I think it's past the gate. Hi, Carla. How you doing today? Hi, Doug. Not too bad. Is Tyler here yet? No, not that I know of. So, ready for that big retirement? Eh, working on it. <laughs> oh, I think it's over here. Yeah. <laughs> Where to go? Where to go? Okay, right there. Hey, Carla. Can you tell your partner to pay me back that hundred bucks he owes me? I've been waiting six months for it now. Can't help you there, Jeffrey. Talk to him about it. He's been avoiding me like the plague. Plus, you know, you're the only one he listens to. I do not like that Catch guy. Catch you there. later, Jeffrey. Looks really poopy. Hi, Carla. Hello. Hi, Garrett. Oh, wait, Carla. I got some results back on the tests we did for that restaurant murder. Great. As soon as Tyler gets here, we'll come and see you. Okay, I'll be at my desk all morning. Tyler is still not here. I'd better try to give him a ring. So how's everybody's weekend? I didn't really do much. I just hung around in my dorm, just watching, I guess, uh, just watching videos on YouTube. Just watching other Let's Plays. Let's drink some water. Okay, let's call Black Guy. Black guy. Yeah. Know what time it is? Oh shit. <laughs> shit. Gotta move on. The waitress is coming this morning to flesh out the composite on the killer. I'm on my way. Oh, it's card. A mail. Hi Carla, I'm sorry I wasn't able to give you any news for a while. I've been very busy with my job, I'll drop by your place as soon as I can to tell you about my latest adventures. Lots of kisses, Tommy. Okay.
It's all happened before. Kirsten, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, why does that make you sad? Is he going to have some blah, blah, blah? I don't care anymore. Alright, let's get up. Keep doing that when I want to switch characters. Let's get up. And stay a little longer. Mm, sorry, babe, but I really gotta go. I'll make some coffee. Okay, I'll grab a shower, get dressed, and then I'm out of here. I love watching her when she's sleeping. <laughs> That's creepy. I've known her for two years now. She still rocks my world the way she did the first time I ever saw her. I thought you were in a hurry. Hey, I always got two minutes for you, babe. Only two minutes? Girl, when you're with me, you only need two minutes. <laughs> Tyler hates it when anyone touches his stuff. I hate it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Alright. <laughs> Let's calm again. Yeah, Carter. I'm on my way. Uh, yeah, I know. No, I... No, I, I just had a little problem, so I'll... Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm right there. <laughs> Girl, okay, this time I really am out of here. <laughs> Here's a stretch. What's that question mark? A statuette of socks, one of the characters in my favorite video game. It's broad daylight outside. I think I'm a little early. Hey, you're a good-looking guy, you know that? <laughs> Take a shower. It's kind of funny how they always have this kind of music for this guy. That was a quick shower. Let's close on. Suit up. Put some music on. Oh cool, he has like a record player.
It's like this guy's from the 70s. Go back to bed, Sam. You're gonna catch a death of cold like that. I'm not cold. Sam, please don't start. I got no intention of dying today. I'm sick of living in fear like this. Every morning I'm, I'm terrified that something's gonna happen to you. I know how you feel, Sam. There's a lot of violence out there. But if nobody does anything, it's all gonna go to shit. We're gonna have kids someday. Shit. I wanna leave them a world that's a little better than the one we got now. But why does it have to be you who's out there risking his life, Tyler? Why couldn't we just go to Florida and work with my family and live a normal life like everybody else? Yeah, well, Florida. But why do I have to wonder if you're gonna die it's all every human day? Over there and stuff. I'm just not made for that kind of life, Sam. I've been around too much violence all my life to go live some kind of normal life like that. I know you love me, babe. So try to understand me, too. Salad now, set the train. Bye, honey. I love you, Tyler. I love you too. See, they always have this music for him. Like, yeah, I'm back. Hi, Tyler. Oh, uh, Carl is looking for you. Yeah, I know. So, you ready for retirement, man? Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working on it. That's some mean saxophone there. Let it crawl. Well, that guy's gonna bother us. Hey, Tyler, what do you know? Just the guy I was looking for. Oh, shit. Shit. You remember that hundred bucks I loaned you about six months ago? I'd really like for you to get that back to me as soon as possible. Like maybe now, for example? Jeffrey, do you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs> because he believes in you. And way up in the clouds, he's telling you, money has no value, Jeffrey. The only thing that really matters is love, man. That's real funny, Tyler. Now give me my hundred bucks before I get really pissed. Proposition. Yo, let me make you a deal. I'll play you a game of b-ball for your hundred bucks. If you win, I'll give you 200 bucks right then. But if you lose, we cool. You'll give me 200 bucks if I win. You got my word, man. All right, you're on. But don't even think about not paying me if you lose, because that... Don't worry, Jeffrey. I'll come by and see you when I get five minutes. <laughs> man, that's a lot of uh, deer right there. <laughs> Because thanks. <laughs> the waitress hasn't come in yet? She won't be long. Garrett got the lab results. Shall we go? All right, let me hang up my coat. I'll be right with you. Okay. See you in a minute. All right. Oh yeah. Uh 
Hi, Tyler. Hello. So, what do you want to start with? What about the pool of blood in the stall? You're not going to believe this. The blood wasn't from the victim, it was from the killer. What was he doing bleeding in the stall? I have absolutely no idea. What did you find on the knife? Got some good prints off it. They matched those found on the fork and glass at the suspect's table. So, the murderer was definitely at that table. Anything on the blade? I'm getting to that. We definitely had blood from the victim, but the weird thing is we also found blood from the killer. Killer's oh. booth. Hmm. Tell me about the blood found in the killer's booth. As strange as it might sound, that blood didn't come from the victim. It was the killer's? So it would seem. He was wounded? Phone calls. Did you get the list of calls that came through the telephone at the restaurant? Yep. There were about a dozen in the four hours that preceded the murder. I'll send you a list by email. What about coffee? Did you find anything on the coffee cup? The only prints we found belonged to the waitress. That's impossible, man. That cup was half empty. Somebody must have drank it. Were there any prints on the book that was under the table? Yep, and they matched the ones on the fork and the glass. So it was definitely his book. It looked like a fairly old book. Maybe we can get some more stuff out of it. So, what do you think about all that? I don't have any explanation for the blood in the stall. The victim could have wounded the killer during a struggle, but it doesn't make sense that it would be in the stall. It's as though the killer wounded himself. Hey, why not? You get clumsy fools in every other profession. Why not killers? <laughs> That's kind of a flimsy explanation, Garrett. Uh, to each his own, Carla. I do the testing, you figure out the reason why. Thanks for your help, Garrett. See you later. All right, so, what do we do Fair now? Enough. You go take care of the composite. I'm gonna go check with the coroner and see if he got anything from the body. Okay, catch you later. When Marcus and I were kids, we were inseparable. He's the one who took care of me after our parents died. We kind of grew apart after he became a priest. But he's still the only person I really trust. The only one who might believe that I had nothing to do with all this mess. Alright, I think that's it for this episode. See you guys later.